Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now this video is going to be talking about blood sugar control and in particular I wanted to talk about the way that vinegar can uh, be beneficial at helping to control blood sugar. Now the reason I wanted to talk about vinegar in particular and make this video is because I it's I don't think it's commonly um, known that vinegar and other acids as well uh, have this benef beneficial effect on um, on blood sugar uh, and I wanted to talk about um, why this is important and um, how you can use this uh, in your diet to help you um, better control your blood sugar after you've eaten um, a meal containing carbohydrate um, to give some background on why this uh, is, in, is an important topic, um, let's talk about blood sugar control and um, glycemia. Now, the Western diet contains too many refined carbohydrates and those refined carbohydrates are detrimental to the health. And the reason they're detrimental to the health is because they supply too much glucose to the blood uh, in too short a time period. And that rapid rise in blood sugar that you get from eating refined carbohydrates, uh, it, can, it can cause problems with uh, the insulin receptor. And over time, uh, the insulin receptor becomes insensitive to the hormone insulin. And the reason that happens is because when a lot of carbohydrate, a lot of, when we're talking really about glucose, when glucose enters the blood, when it enters the blood in large amounts in a very short period of time, the body has to respond by releasing large amounts of insulin in a very short amount of time. Now, firstly, that can stress the pancreas because the pancreas only has a finite capacity to produce insulin and only a finite capacity to release it. So that can actually stress the pancreas over time. But secondly, that insulin causes some of the insulin receptors to downregulate in the cells uh, because there's, there's too much of it. Uh, it's a kind of a negative feedback mechanism uh, to protect the cells from, from too much carbohydrate. So some of the insulin receptors get drawn into the cells. So the cells actually become insensitive to the insulin anyway. Uh, and what tends to happen over time is that if you allow that to continue, that insulin sensitivity to continue, that's really a road to getting type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a, a situation where you've got very insensitive, your cells have become very insensitive to the hormone insulin. So when you consume glucose, your blood sugar levels go up, but they don't come down again because that, that glucose not, is not pushed into the cells, it stays in the blood. And that can have physiological um, consequences. That glucose has an osmotic effect in the blood, which can change water balance. Um, and it can also damage uh, proteins in, in, in the blood vessels because the carbohydrate can, uh, can, can, can react with the proteins and you get, you get things like um, glycated hemoglobin, which, is red, which are red blood cells which have carbohydrates attached to them. And that actually causes them to become dysfunctional. So high levels of blood glucose over long periods of time due to insulin, ins insulin ins insensitivity uh, is detrimental to the health. And this is now directly linked to consuming refined carbohydrates in the Western diet. So there's a number of things that you can do in your diet to prevent this from happening. The first thing is not to eat refined carbohydrates. So instead of eating, um, you know, what I would call ready-made breakfast cereals, which are mostly refined, um, you can avoid those. You can avoid white bread. You can avoid avoid refined pasta. If you eat whole grains and you stick to whole grains, that will have some effect. Uh, another very good strategy is to limit the amount of grain that you consume because grain uh, is very good at causing large amounts of insulin to be released. And, uh, you, you know, really, uh, before we had, um, you know, modern agricultural practices, the amount of grain in the diet was much less and te people tended to eat more vegetables. So that's another thing you can do. Replace some of the grain in your diet with vegetables and try and eat um, a small amount of fruit, but more vegetables. Vegetables tend to be uh, higher in water content, lower in sugar content, and they can tend to contain very uh, high amounts of phytochemicals. So vegetables tend to be healthier than fruits. Uh, and they, uh, you know, if you eat more vegetables, you tend to decrease the amount of grains you would eat, and that would have a beneficial effect as well. But what you can also do is you can try and consume certain things with your foods that slows the release of the carbohydrate 
into your blood, it slows the release of the glucose, and therefore there's less pre there's less um, uh, pressure on the pancreas, there's less uh, insulin released, and therefore less damage to the to the pancreas. And because there's less insulin released, uh, it's it's much less likely that you will cause insulin insensitivity, insulin resistance. Uh, and it, if you have developed insulin resistance, you can actually reverse that by going through this process. And one of the foods that you can eat that actually has this benefic beneficial effect is vinegar. Uh, and vinegar has this effect because it is an acid. Um, now there's, uh, there, I will put a link to a study that has looked at the effects of vinegar on the consumption, uh, on the, uh, the, the blood glucose level uh, following consumption of white rice. And this paper contained a number of other, um, uh, number of other uh, additives that were given at the same time as the rice, including dairy products, which also had a beneficial glycemic effect, particularly yogurt. So consuming yogurt with um, carbohydrate foods will also decrease your blood sugar levels, will bring your blood sugar levels under control. But they looked at vinegar, and in particular, they looked at sushi, uh, which uh, had vinegar in it. And they also looked at products um, uh, of white rice that contained vinegar as well. Now, bear in mind, these were food products, so they were palatable. So the, the vinegar content was not hugely high because obviously that would have made the foods very unpalatable. These were on these foods were you know given to human subjects, so they had to be palatable. So the amount of vinegar is not. Um, you know we're not talking about lots of vinegar we're talking about using vinegar as a condiment in the food and at those kind of levels there is a beneficial effect and what they found is that the addition of vinegar to 100 grams of uh, white rice actually reduced the blood sugar levels by somewhere between 20 and 40 percent so if we take that as about a 30 percent reduction that's a significant reduction in your peak uh, and area under the curve of blood sugar levels. That would have a significant effect on your health over time, um, and it, you know that would be uh, you know considering that's just um, adding vinegar to food that you'd be eating anyway. That's that's I, I would say that's quite a, a substantial reduction in blood sugar levels from um, you know from from you know and we still remember we're still consuming white rice. We didn't do any of the other things like reducing the amount of rice we're consuming, eating, you know, eating vegetables with the rice. There's many other things you could do to have a to cause a greater effect, but that's just adding vinegar to the white rice. You get a 30%, about a 30% reduction in the amount of blood sugar um, in the in the, the area under the curve for blood sugar um, over time, which which is a, which is a significant reduction. Um, so why does vinegar have this effect? Um, Vinegar has this effect um, probably because it's an acid, so other acids may also have this effect. So citric acid, so consumption of lemons or limes along with food would probably have a similar effect. And the reason it has an effect is because the small intestine is very susceptible to acid. It's, it has uh, receptors that detect acid. Now the reason the small intestine has these receptors is because the stomach produces acid and the stomach is the point of digestion for protein. Now that acid is required to denature the proteins to unravel the amino acid chains in order to allow the enzymes to be able to snip them up into smaller portions so that they can be digested. And it's very important that the body keeps those proteins in the stomach for a, a long period of time in order for those proteins to be digested. Now there is a there is a very complex feedback mechanism that uh, um, produces acid and then turns the acid off once the proteins have been digested. But if any proteins pass into the small intestine along with acid before they've been digested and before this process has, has, has gone to completion, the small intestine will um, send uh, release chemicals which will cause the um, uh, the stomach to prevent the, the 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 efflux of any more food. In other words, the stomach gets trapped in the, uh, the the food gets trapped in the stomach uh, and therefore it allows the digestion to be completed. So acidic conditions in the small intestine are known to limit the emptying from the stomach. Um, and there has been um, a number of studies that have looked at adding acid to the small intestine directly through tubes. So there were tubes put people uh, put down people's throats, and those tubes went into the small intestine at various uh, various portions of the small intestine, and then various acids were added to see what the effect on stomach emptying was. And generally, acid added to the small intestine. Um, caused this reduction in the emptying of the stomach. Now, obviously, if that white rice 
is in the stomach uh, when your uh, when this signal arrives at the, you know arrives at the, when the acid arrives at the small intestine and the signal is sent to to to, to stop the emptying of the stomach that white rice will be kept in the stomach for longer and therefore it will delay the breakdown of the carbohydrate because carbohydrate is not digested really in the stomach it's digested in the small intestine and delaying the gastric emptying delaying the emptying of the stomach will cause that uh, rice to only uh, very slowly trickle into the small intestine which means that the digestion rate will be slower and therefore the absorption of the glucose will also be slower so consumption of, of acids with um, your um, with your food uh, has this beneficial glycemic effect um, this paper that, that I mentioned also looked at yogurt um, and yogurt is also an acidic food um, now dairy generally including milk and cheese will also have um, this um, delaying effect uh, the, the effect of adding dairy seems to be universal but it seems to be particularly um, particularly uh, common with when it's eaten with when foods are eaten with yogurt and that might be because uh, yogurt tends to be acidic I and mean, that's because uh, the bacteria that produce the yogurt from the milk that curdle the milk um, they uh, tend to as a byproduct produce lactic acid so yogurt is another acidic food and that might be the reason that the authors of this paper also found that yogurt was effective at reducing uh, blood sugar levels um, so what's the take-home message from this um, firstly that um, too many people eat too many carbohydrates they eat too many refined carbohydrates and it's become common practice to eat lots of grains. That is, I think, detrimental to the health. Uh, we should be moving our diet away from refined grains to whole grains, and we should also be limiting the amount of whole grains that we consume, and we should be eating more vegetables. Um, what we should also be doing is we should be using strategies like adding yogurt, consuming foods with yogurt, um, consuming foods with vinegar, using all of these tactics in order to be able to gain uh, better control over our blood sugar and that will keep our insulin sensitivity high and that means that uh, we won't receive any of the detrimental effects of high blood glucose levels which can over the long term lead to a number of diseases uh, and that can include obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease and really what we call the western lifestyle diseases um, and these are the types of diseases that more and more people are suffering from and if you look at people's diets uh, generally what people eat um, you can see they eat far too many carbohydrates, far too many refined carbohydrates and the amount of vegetables uh, that they consume is low and you know things like vinegar and yogurt they're not commonly consumed anymore and this may also be having an effect. So I hope you found that interesting I will put the link to the paper in the comments box below this video. As always eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and I'll see you soon for another video. Take care.